Thank you so much for checking out this free video. If you don't mind, please click like and subscribe. So the opener was, and by the way, I watched the uh, Rampage show because we just reviewed it. And they had that Harley Cameron segment with Soraya. Not one mention of Britt Baker. I think they announced this the day of the show. You had Britt Baker wrestling on collision. I had no idea till she came down to the ring. This is one of those deals where, I mean, everything about this segment was basically a disaster. Britt comes out. She got a big pop, but it's like, Britt Baker's on collision? I had absolutely no idea. So she's out there to face Harley Cameron, and Harley gets the heat on Britt. And she's beating on her, and she's beating on her, and there's no heat during the heat. Like, people are not into Harley Cameron beating up Britt Baker. And Britt Baker's got a match with Mercedes. One of the biggest matches, probably the fourth biggest match on the Wembley show in terms of interest. And she's just out here selling for Harley. So she finally makes a comeback. Super kick, sling blade, curb stomp. She pins her. At least she got the pin, but she sold way too much for somebody who is in a superstar position going up against Mercedes. And then Mercedes and Camille come out. And Britt grabs a kendo stick because Camille's big. So Camille ends up grabbing the stick. She shoves down Britt Baker. She breaks the stick over her knee. They get into a brawl. Camille beats her ass, boots her in the face, throws her in the ring, hits her with her finish, and leaves her for dead. So it wasn't even like Britt's getting the better of it and Mercedes trips her up or it's two-on-one, or whatever. This babyface, Britt Baker, started the fight, got her ass kicked, even though she had a weapon, and was totally laid out and killed, not even by the person that she's facing for the title, but by her henchwoman. So I was flabbergasted watching this, absolutely baffled that they did this. And I'm sure she'll maybe... I don't know what she's going to do on Wednesday, but, I mean... This was one of those deals where the hottest it ever was was when Mercedes was in the ring and Britt made her big return and they had a stare down and that's all you needed to do. And on Wednesday, when uh, Britt ends up laying her out and Camille saves, it was like, that's your go-home angle. You don't need any more. Just like end it there. And they decided to shoot one more angle and it didn't help at all. If anything, it hurt interest in this match. So, I don't know whose idea this was, but this was a disaster. Then we had Dustin and Sammy versus Taven and Bennett for the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. And which is like a week ago, they were talking about wanting the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. Now here they are with a title match, and they won! Uh, everybody got involved. We had... Uh, First, it was Taven and Bennett coming down. Then Mortos and Roderick Strong. Then uh, Brian Cage in the Gates of Agony. Then the rest of the conglomeration. Total Pandalarium at ringside. And then Taven has Dustin in a small package. Dustin kicks out. Dustin hits a tw uh, twisting suplex. Sammy hits a senton. And yes, Dustin and Sammy, new Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions. And I'd have done it anyway because I think the Dustin is awesome. And he is one of those guys who, I hate the you deserve it chance, but man, this guy's deserving of something. But it's one of those deals where, you know, he was talking about a month ago, his uh, contract is up like any time, next few weeks, I think, uh, September, maybe. And, you know, next thing you know, he's the trios champion. And then as soon as he said that he wanted the Ring of Honor tag team titles, and I knew that his deal was up, and obviously... Cody is the champion in WWE, and there's, like, so much you could do with Cody and Dustin, especially with the Bloodline feud and everything. I was like, this dude's winning the Ring of Honor tag team titles. So, you know, he said that he's going to resign, but everybody says that. I mean, if I were him, I would, I would play both sides. And, I mean, man, there's so much money to be made doing that final run with Cody in WWE. So we'll see what happens. But right now, he is a double champion for Ring of Honor. We had a Swerve Danielson video package, which was quite great. A bunch of wrestlers giving their thoughts on who was going to win and 
Uh, just made it seem like a much, much bigger deal. This is the opposite of the thing they did with Britt Baker here because, you know, I wasn't uh, super into the booking of this match until uh, Dynamite. And between Dynamite and Collision, I think they've uh, they've done an excellent job making this seem like a very important match. Jericho did a promo backstage. He said he was going to beat Hook. And after he did, he wanted him out of the Jericho Vortex uh, vortex forever. You're banned, he said. And they said, Tommy Billington's just like Hook. He's entitled. And when I found out the Hook match was official, I wanted a warm-up match. And that's going to be Billington. I knew Dynamite Kitty said, the original. And he wouldn't like you. He said, Billington had been trained properly. I'm a modern-day Stu Hart, he says. And I'm going to teach this youngster a lesson in violence in front of his people in the UK. On Dynamite, the Dynamite Kid is going to be Dynamite Done. So that's the match for Wednesday, as well as Hook and Big Bill. We had Angelico versus Hologram, which was good while lasted. Angelico, fabulous luchador, great technical wrestler, great opponent for Hologram. Hologram did this uh, Phantasma style tope before the break. Uh, those of you that have seen Santos Escobar, but only in WWE, back when he was Ijo del Fantasma, this dude did the craziest topes, him and, uh, and Black Warrior. But anyway, uh, and Helico hit an Enzigiri, side suplex, Mahi Strahl. They did a series of cradles, cradle, 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 cradle. Hologram pinned him. Mostly technical wrestling, but it was very good while it lasted. And man, these fans in Arlington, they love them some hologram. They love this guy. They did a video package with the story of the Tiger Driver 91. And the whole video package is about how dangerous this move is and how conflicted Will Ospreay is about using it. And it was interesting because they continually brought up Misawa. And, you know, they talked about how Misawa did this move all the time and eventually retired it and... Um, you know, they mentioned that he had passed away, but, you know, they didn't mention that he passed away after taking a suplex in the ring, not a tiger driver. It was like a, a back suplex style, a high angle, and uh, and it was internal decapitation. Basically broke his neck, internal decapitation, and died. And, you know, he had so much neck trauma from doing stuff like tiger drivers. And I'm actually glad they didn't mention that. But if you know the story of Misawa, I mean, it makes the whole story of the Tiger Driver, I mean, it, it adds a new, it makes it, a lot of people when they hear this story, they're like, oh, it doesn't make any sense that a guy doesn't want to do a move that might hurt somebody because all moves hurt in wrestling and storyline. And that's true. All moves are supposed to hurt, but there are certain moves that, you know, you can, you can die. You can land on your head and die. And, uh, and this is one of those moves. It's, it's if you if you do it the way that Brian Danielson took it, it's not dangerous. And even Kenny Omega said that the way he took it was more on his shoulder and not on his head and neck, so it wasn't as dangerous as it looked. But it's a dangerous move, and you know, even in storyline, like there are some moves more dangerous than others. Like if you you know there are jujitsu tournaments where you can do any move, but for example, some tournaments the heel hook is banned. Well. People would say, what's the difference between a heel hook and an ankle lock? Well, an ankle lock, you know, you submit or whatever. Heel hook, you can tear out your knee and, like, totally destroy your knee. So it's actually a more dangerous submission, a seriously dangerous submission compared to, say, an arm bar, an Americana. You can hurt somebody with those other moves. But one of the things is, for example, if you're putting a, uh, if you're putting an Americana, arm bar, uh, any shoulder lock... Like, you feel pain, and you tap. And obviously, if you feel pain and you don't tap, you can have your shoulder, arm, whatever ruined. But the thing with a heel hook is you don't feel pain until it snaps. So there's a big difference. And so, you know, Tiger Driver is a move like any other move, but it is a significantly more dangerous move, even in storyline, also in real life. So anyway, I like this story, and it was interesting they mentioned uh, Misawa. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.